Oklahoma is fast. I mean, they are fast. Did you watch that game? Oh, yeah. Oklahoma-Houston? Oh, yeah. The, the speed the speed of Oklahoma is unbelievable. And the defense but, looks yeah, so much hurt. better this year. Oh, my gosh. They are so fast everywhere. That's why I was watching it. Just watching the game, I went, oh, my gosh. These guys are fast, and their defense is swarming. I mean, that listen, Oklahoma – um, you know, is is going to be well. They have been every year. I mean, they're always you know they're they're if they're Clemson and Alabama, Oklahoma. You know, they're they're the third school, right? Uh, in that triumphant that seems to always be you know in the mix. Um, but boy, uh, I I don't think they lose to Texas this year. Uh, not with not with because Houston's good. I mean, Houston gave up Houston scored like fifty points a game last year, something like that, five hundred fifty yards in offense a game, and and they couldn't do anything. I mean, they couldn't do anything against that defense for Oklahoma. Not not for the first, you know, uh, was it three quarters or something? They they kind of came back and sort of making a game of it. But man, Oklahoma, Jalen Hurts, are you kidding me? Yeah. What was that? What he drove for over three hundred, rushed for almost two hundred. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty. He he, he uh, was he was the know, whole how, team. How, how well he did. My God, it, it, you know. What was his record at Alabama? What was he, 30, 32 and 3 or something in Alabama? And he wasn't the starting He wasn't I mean, come on. Toss. See, coming, in, coming into this year, again, I have never been high on him as a passer. I thought, I think a lot of times as a passer, he's been more of a liability. But that's the thing is if you, if you, if you take the talent you have and you put the right system around him or put him in the right system, this is what can happen. They're not asking him to make all the great throws, but he looks better throwing. When you get a kid in a rhythm doing something he does well, like running or short passes, you're building up the confidence, and now he's following through on the harder, on the harder plays in a better way. He, he's playing better at what he's bad at because you've built up his confidence with easier stuff. You know, I mean, the, it was just, it was so almost surreal the way, uh, the way he put these numbers up. And again, I, I have uh, and a little spoiler where I'm doing each week my offensive and defensive player of the week. It's called the the go long player of the week for offense. Uh, if, if if I didn't pick Jalen Hurts to be the offensive player of the week, I don't know. My my head. Somebody would have to check my head because my son is is truly. I mean, it, it's three hundred and thirty two yards passing, three touchdowns, no interceptions. I don't know how his quarterback rating was only 96.7. Like, I don't, you know, and that doesn't, that's not even talking about the rushing yards. If you didn't pick him, you, 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 we'd have to call it the coming up short player of the, of the week because you, you'd have come up way short. Because there's, there's no way to get, I mean, if you watch the game, now, I didn't watch every college football game this week. Obviously, there were a lot of games I didn't want to watch because I'm, I'm not going to watch, you know, yeah. whoever, you know, some of these blowout games, right? But yeah. uh, that was one heck of a performance from uh, from him. And now, listen, it's, you know, listen, the last two quarterbacks coached by Lincoln Ronnie won Heisman trophies. So, you know, it's no accident, right, that, that Jalen Hurts would be able to be successful in that, in, in that system because – Lincoln Riley knows what he's doing. I mean, nobody, nobody thought Baker Mayfield was a Heisman Trophy quarterback. Exactly. Kyler Murray hadn't even played. Kyler Murray hadn't even played. Uh, right? Like, just just so... Become, not, not only were they... I mean, I... I one I, picks. I'm gonna, I need to nail this home real quick. I, I don't know. I just feel like it's not dead yet. So I'm going to kick this horse a couple more times. I'm going to paint this picture. So Jalen Hurts didn't just do well throwing. 
Uh, he was 20 for 23. He threw 23 balls, and 20 of them got to where they were. That's 87% passing at 14.4 yards on average per completion. Three touchdowns, no interceptions, and his longest was 56 yards. He wasn't sacked at all. His passer rating was 251.3. That's phenomenal. That's, that's ridiculous. Perfect. Now, on the other side, Perfect. he rushed 16 times for 100, 176 yards, 11 yards per attempt. He had three rushing touchdowns. And one of his rushes, which wasn't even a touchdown, was 43 yards. It was a thing of beauty, wasn't it? Like this is this game was a literally drop the mic. I don't need to play another game. Game. I don't know how he lives up to that, but if there was ever a one game, if you just had to pick a Heisman after one game, Jalen Hurts wins the Heisman game one. I mean that's clearly not how it works, well, but I'm just saying. And of course, we're guilty of that, right? I mean, yeah, we're guilty of that. I mean, I mean, you can name you can name a bunch of players that you know. Oh, they, it's it's theirs, it's theirs, it's theirs. Um, so we'll see. I mean, there's some, but but the thing is, though, but Jalen Hurts isn't isn't exactly a, 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 a you know all of a sudden an overnight sensation. I mean, the guy was a Heisman Trophy candidate at Alabama. Kind of. And now he's transferred to kind Oklahoma. Of. I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, I would think he would, would have been the leader for the Heisman behind behind uh, 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 Trevor Williams and um, uh, to it to it Tagaloa, and then you got Jalen Hurts. So I mean, he he was in the top three or four anyway before the season. I would have I would have thought, um, you know, J T. Daniels at USC might have been in that group, but but he's got injured. He's out for the Herbert season. And Oregon's probably in that group, although UCL. he. Herbert didn't look that good the other night. No. Uh, although he was playing against a pretty good Auburn defense. You know, right? so you know, it did. Doubt. Herbert doesn't didn't, didn't look bad. I mean, I mean, let me let me because I I really teed off on on Herbert at the beginning of the show because I have tremendously just with that last pass of the game lost a whole lot of confidence in the kid. Uh, I think his well, he, problem he did, he is he it, just though. thinks but way too much. Matthew completed the pass. He completed it to the security guard standing behind the end zone. I know. You see, you know he, he completed it. Just, which, you know, it's, you know, it's just, just a little bit overthrown. Uh, he, was, he was like 10, 15 yards overthrown anybody that could have caught it in the field of bounds. Like, if it was just, and that's the thing is, that's the last play of the game. And you don't throw it away. In that way, in that case, you you toss it to somebody. You 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 fumble it on purpose so your offensive lineman can pick it up and run with it. You do everything you can to keep the ball in bounds to try to score. Literally, that's the whole rule of the last play of the game. And you know, see, this is see, this is the thing is like when you look at guys like like Love. And in in uh, uh, Utah State, he's more of that guy that that will play the backyard football. You know, he'll improvise a bit more. You see, this is this is the problem that a lot of people have with some of these guys that are just so so tightly wound. They're so in this in this setting that they're the perfect quarterback. I'm the perfect prospect. This is how I play quarterback that they forget that they're playing a game and they don't have to go by this statue look. I mean, Herbert will run, but his his decision-making and ability to improvise and really understand the temperature of the room, I think is is I think that that throw has exposed that weakness. He doesn't have the decision-making in big game situations to come through. Whereas 
Bo Nix, I'm not going to lie, the kid looked confident, looked like a leader the whole game, but he wasn't doing shit until the, until the end. And in that ball he threw it was a terrible ball. It was <laughs> Justin Herbert, and Justin Herbert's word, it was a garbage-ass ball. It was. I don't disagree with him. However, that garbage ass, in, 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 in the words of Peyton Manning, it doesn't matter how the bird flies, as long as you get points, that's all that matters. I mean, because somebody yeah, told, a great ball. no, he did. Well, somebody said, made a comment that it looked like a, a you know, it looked like a dead duck. And they said, well, uh, I've thrown a lot of those dead ducks, but I've scored a lot of touchdowns too. So. If it's going to be a dead duck and a touchdown, who gives a shit whether the, how the duck flies? You know? And that's the thing. Well, he'll, be, he'll be in the Hall of Fame in two years. So yeah. He's walking in the Hall of Fame first ballot. So, you know. That, that duck, duck or not. And, uh, with uh, with uh, two, two Super Bowl wins, right? Two Super Bowl wins. And, you know. Um, but so, it, 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 talk about the Herbert thing, though. It, you know, that might be why he went back. It might be he got word that he that he needed another year. Oh, of, it's, it's, if of, he could uh, seasoning. If he could right. have a sixth year right now, in my opinion, he'd take it. Take it. <laughs> wow, you're harsh on you. You uh, you, you make some really good judgments. I mean, uh, uh, harsh judgments after just one week, man. Wow. Well, I wasn't high on him that, last year. Uh, I wasn't high on him last year. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, people say he's always oh, the best guy to come out. He's he'd be the why? I'm telling you, I would have take Baker Mayfield over him easily. Oh, and 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 you look at what Baker's doing. Oh my gosh! Browns. I mean, I, I'm really excited to see how they how they do this year because uh, Baker Mayfield is an improvise improvisation improv- oh yeah kind of guy, right? That's what he does. Yeah, and uh, you know we'll see what Kyler Murray does this year, and um, you know with his feet as well as his. I, I hope he doesn't do a lot of running. I'm talking about Kyler Murray because yeah, um, he's not that big a guy. Uh, he just isn't. He, you know, RG three got snapped like a twig. That's why. Yeah, he's that, I mean he's still in the league. RG three is, but unfortunately, but he's, he's a backup. He's a he's a that Arizona he's defense backup, is just. Right? That's so terrible. But here's the problem with the Arizona defense. It's the fact that the Arizona defense continues to go against the Arizona offense. So if the most is really what the looks that you're getting are from the spread concept, now every other team that plays normal football can just run it down your damn throat because you're not used to that sort of contact and hitting. Any team that just wants to line up and run it right down the middle of the damn field can beat the Arizona Cardinals. That's how you beat them. It's that simple. Just uh, run it straight down their throat, old school style, and, and you'll beat them. They can't defend the run. What's the Cardinals offensive line? The Cardinals offensive line is just not very terrible. Good. I mean, uh, no, it's terrible. Um, it's not. It's it's yeah. not that it's so, not very so, good. It's terrible. So, you know, it's probably the worst in the NFL. Basically, basically, Kyler Murray is coming into a situation. Like Peyton Manning did when he came into the Colts in his, his first season, or, or, or Andrew Luck. Look, what, what the, look what, what the Colts what did. The Colts look, so, look what happens, so Andrew 14? Luck. You, you guys, eight were they, years out. Were they two and fourteen? Uh, if, if that, I think that was like the first couple years were like that. Because that first, yeah, I think they were two and fourteen his first year. Because the question was is. You know, is is Peyton Manning really what we needed? And then his second year, and, and I don't think his second year was was too much better, but it came around. But uh, uh, yeah, I'd say he came around. The team it, came around, but. But so I think that's the situation Connor Murray finds himself in this year. Um, you know, with a bad team, uh, he's, they're going to have to grow around him somehow. I mean, they have a couple. I mean, Larry Fitzgerald. I don't know how he's still playing, but he's going to play one more year. 
Um, you know, uh, I guess, did they still have David Johnson at running back? I think they do, but, you know, that's, you know, he's snagged up. So, I don't know. I don't watch any preseason because it's a waste of my time, but we'll have to see what happens uh, starting on, uh, um, gosh, uh, uh, Thursday night, right? NFL starts Thursday night. Thursday night. Yep. Thursday night. So, uh, we'll have to see what happens, but uh, but getting back to the getting back to the games this week. Though. I know, I know, you, you keep going back to the last week, but you know, last week's done. There's some really good games. There's some more really, really good games this week. Um, you know, um, well, I get, I got to we got to hit on one more game before we go. Is one more game? Okay. Because I haven't done my okay. my defensive okay. player of week one yet, and my oh, defensive okay. player. Right of the week is Eric Lee Jr. from the University of Nebraska. Two interceptions, one touchdown, and a forced fumble. And a game, if it wasn't for two touchdowns on defense and one on special team, Nebraska probably doesn't beat South Alabama. Well, mathematically, they don't. They wouldn't beat them. But they did. They got by. So last year, we saw the offense just hum and kind of move. And the weakness I've seen this year, and it it actually is Adrian Martinez in that offense. The the offensive line isn't, isn't getting the push that they need and the pad level they need, and the running's not moving like it should. Again, when Washington came in in the second half, it moved better. However, Adrian Martinez, he has this this arm angle, this this passing angle that's like a three-quarters throw. It's not sidearm. It's a release just three-quarters. It's not a full, full extension release. And because of that, it's tougher for him to get those, you know, teardrop in the bucket shots, you know, those throws. And he's worked on it all off season on improving that and fixing that. And in this game, some of those passes that really just need to be dropped in there were the ones that, you know, you could really see that the development isn't there yet. Now I'm hopeful it'll come. However, I think that's probably what's going to struggle with this offense, you know, as far as like a central point of it, is if if, if he can't work on getting touch on the football, it's going to be tough for them, especially coming up with against defenses like Michigan State, you know, potentially Michigan State, Wisconsin, Iowa, very st- Dingy defenses that don't give up much rushing. You're going to have to pass it, and your your slants and your cuts, and, and the comebacks aren't going to always be there. And you're not going to and you're not going to just be able to get deep because those defenses get upfield with their front their front three or seven rushers all the time because they have formidable defensive front sevens. So. You're not going to have time to throw it deep and, and use Spielman so much deep. So you're going to have to get it to your, your tight ends and your running backs uh, in the short field. But a lot of times you have to see that window and get it in between that window of those defenders. And it means over the top of one, dropping down in front of the other. And with that three-quarters angle, it makes it really tough for him to – get it over that first defender. So it gets tipped a lot or it gets deflected or it gets intercepted, and that's where the troubles come. People look at it as, you know, it's a very bad ball. It is, but it's just because he's, he's not getting the arc angle on it that he needs. So did you watch Nebraska-South Alabama? I did not. I did not watch that one. One of the uh, seventy games I didn't watch. I uh, I had to watch it on replay myself. I paid attention to it. So 
I paid attention to it. I uh, was looking at the score. Um, you know, they, they, it looked like they were, they were ahead the whole game, weren't they? I don't think they were ever. Yeah, they were ahead the whole game. Jeopardy. Uh, yeah, it was close. I mean, yeah, it was twenty four twenty at one point. Fourteen point game. But, yeah. Yeah, it got down there a little bit, but uh, so you know, I yeah. You know, listen, you, you just want to win that first game, and and I know some teams didn't, uh, but they did, and and so. I, you know, I, I'm one of the games I am very interested in this week, and it's not just because of you. Is is Nebraska Colorado? Um, you know, uh, Colorado got by Colorado State last week. Um, one of those, one of those week one uh, uh, rivalry games, which is you know usually there's rivalry games at the end of the season, but. Colorado plays Colorado State, and you had Utah BYU last week, and so uh, interesting. That, that 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 game's interesting to me to to just uh, um, to see how how good Nebraska really is because that game is at Colorado, early road game. Colorado's not supposed to be great, but Power Five school, so uh, we could, could see how how that turns out so i'm interested in that game and there's some clear and i'm, I'm, I'm waiting for some clarification on the time start time of that so i understand i mean it's always been advertised 3 30 but i've seen some reports that's being moved back to 9 p.m eastern time so it's going to be a later game i'm still waiting for some clarification espn is showing 3 30 and the game's going to be on Fox. But I've also seen reports that that game got moved back to 9 o'clock. I don't know why. Well, I'm, I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing uh, 3.30 Eastern for that game. But um, I'll keep an eye out now on that. Uh, I like those late games because I get, I get to watch those things, so. Um, yep, I'm still showing. I, I've, I've checked a couple of different sources, and I'm still I'm still seeing two thirty. I mean, two thirty Central, three thirty Eastern time. That, that and that would be one thirty, one thirty um, Mountain Mountain time. Local local time. One thirty local time at Colorado. So I, I think it'd be it'd be unlikely at this late stage for them to change that I, I would I would suspect um, be a little late for that so you know I was looking at the associated top 25 and the first time I've ever seen this two top two 25 teams Nebraska's ranked 25 they dropped from 24 to 25 after a win and then Iowa State after Barely getting by Northern Iowa with a win. They dropped down to 25 as well. So the Associated Press has 26 in their top 25. I've never seen that before. Because they tied. Have you, have you seen a tie before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, it doesn't happen very often. I've been up all the time, but, you know. And it's probably more likely in the AP because they don't have as many voters in the AP. But so no, that's a an important game for Nebraska to kind of get their feet under them. Um, I, I don't know where Arizona State has any business being ranked 25th, but that's probably the Iowa Herb State. Edwards effect. No Iowa Coach State. Arizona State. Matt Campbell. Oh Iowa. Iowa State. Iowa State. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they they should drop after almost losing, you know, to that that game. Yeah, Iowa State. Yeah, so I, I, you know, but once again, first games. I mean, you know, there's been teams. Heck, there's been teams lose their first game and going to win national championship. Well, Iowa State got beat by Virginia Tech the year they won it. So, you know, first game doesn't always mean a whole lot, unless it's a conference game. 
right? Because if it's a, if it's a conference game, then that's a that's a thing in the conference. If it's non conference game, you can run the table and win your division, get to you know championship, and you know, you're on on the way. So um, we'll see. But that that's an interesting game. You know, the headline game. I mean, I guess I guess there's two games that you could put as headliners this week. Is uh, number one Clemson hosting number twelve Texas A and M? Yeah, uh, that's Jimbo Fisher, former coach at Florida State. He knows Clemson well. Uh, played them every season. Uh, they were in the same division of the ACC. They were in the Atlantic. And now in his second year at Texas A and M, you know Jimbo Fisher has a pretty good squad heading to Death Valley and Clemson. I, I've got to give Clemson a nod here. I, I, I just, it's at Clemson. Trevor Lawrence is not, it's, it's not, did nothing against Georgia Tech that would dissuade me from saying he's the best quarterback in the country, even though Chandler Hurts and Tua Tagovailoa are, are both very good players. Um, and you know, you just got to give Clemson the nod right now. I mean, they, they're, they are, they are such a complete football team. Um, but a and good. I mean, this is one of those games that I, that I think would be very entertaining to watch. Uh, but, you know, um, you know if, if this game was – if this game was um, – how do I say this? If this game was at Texas A&M, I would give A&M a shot. I mean, a real shot. But going going on the road, I think it's a, it's a whole different story going to play in, playing in Clemson. Both places are tough to play. I've been to both both those stadiums, by the way, and they are both um, terrific places to watch football game. A uh, and M in particular, but uh, I've been to both those stadiums for big games. I, I saw a Clemson Florida State game uh, a few years back uh, for. That was, that was such an experience. When that stadium's filled up, A and M seats more, and it's it's a crazy environment as well. But I'd, I'd have to give Clemson the nod, not not just over talent, but but having being at, at Clemson, <clears throat> plus Clemson's defending national championships. I mean, what's A and M done? You know, so I, I I'll go with that. And Trevor Lawrence is, you know that. And just a sophomore is the impressive part about him. And so I'll I'll, I'll go there. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see Texas A&M make a close game of it, uh, or at least a challenge Clemson uh, at least early. But I think it, I think Clemson will finally wear him down. Third quarter, fourth quarter. Uh, this may not be the year for A&M. A&M might be, you know, we're we'll going to be looking at a, at a next year uh, resurgence for them. Third year under under Jimbo Fisher, you know, two, two recruiting seasons, two recruiting classes. So I've got to take uh, Clemson in that game. You still with us, uh, Matthew? Yes. Uh, I, I okay. give, I'm giving the edge to Clemson uh, in that game as well. And uh, we talked about a game earlier, Army and Michigan. I picked Michigan in that game. Uh, Ohio State, I picked them to beat Cincinnati. Much closer game than it should be. Uh, Syracuse and Maryland. I think there's a few games this week that aren't marquee games. I think Syracuse and Maryland is going to be one of those games that should be an interesting game to watch because Syracuse has been on the rise and building a quality program. And Maryland is, they're just freakishly athletic and they know how to score points. And I want to see what, what they can do this season. I mean, last year we saw them; they beat Texas last year. They beat Texas twice, two years in a row, actually. Um, and then 
towards uh, towards the end of the season. They had an, an overtime loss to Ohio State. They lost by two to Indiana, and they they made it a game for a little while against Michigan. They ended up losing forty two to twenty one. But this is one of those teams. Is is what can they be this year moving forward? I mean, they put up seventy nine points last week. Of course, it's on Howard. But still, 79 points is a lot yeah. of points. That's a lot of points. It doesn't matter who that it's a, on. It's still, that it's a, a lot, lot of points. points. I mean, that's, that's In regulation. a lot of points. I mean, you've got to be you, – you've got to be scoring it. I mean, that is, that's, that's three touchdowns a quarter. 28 they, points in the first, something like 28 that. points in the second, and then they pulled their starters. It was second and third, fourth string – the rest of the game, and they still pitched the shutout. 16 points in the third, 7 points in the fourth. But I'm still saying, I mean, you, you, you're you putting up almost 60 points in the first half of the game. You know? You, they yeah, literally I mean, scored every time they touched that's, it. That's, they had, and it was special teams that. returning it. It was, it was, it was offense. It was that every everybody on the field got touchdowns. It was like Oprah. You get a touchdown and you get a touchdown. And you get points. It was, you know, it was like Oprah was handing out points at the Maryland uh, to to Maryland at, at that at that game. You know, it's a lot of points. I mean, yeah, I mean, I can see why that game would intrigue you a little bit, uh, but. Syracuse is pretty good. Oh yeah, uh, I know. I'm not knocking Syracuse. Well, I'm just saying it's it, it's just an intriguing but, game. To me. It's one of those. Again, it's it's this, it's like certain games like this. These are I would call them the off brand games. It's two power five schools, and you know, to the casual observer, this shouldn't even be close because Maryland isn't good, and Syracuse is. But I think this is going to be an interesting game. I don't. I don't think Old Dominion Virginia Tech is going to be an interesting game. But I'm sure you'll watch it. However, well, we didn't. We didn't think so last year either. And Old Dominion beat yeah. the snot out of them. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll have to see. I how was. They, I was trying I to steer clear be, of that. Tech's going to be hurting. Uh, Tech's going to be uh, ready for some. For something after turning the ball over five times and still losing by only a touchdown last week, uh, that should have been a probably a two two touchdown win for the Hokies, and they just ended up just uh, squandering any opportunity by by turning the ball over as many times as they did. Um, so we'll see about that. I mean, I, I've seen reports that Justin Fuente of Virginia Tech is on the hot seat. I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, yeah. He won a he won a, a division title his first season, and the uh, last two years have been pretty disappointing. To and say that was the a, least, that, that game bothered me. It, it always bothers me, you know, to go up to Boston College to open the season like that because the first week is I, such a crap. Shoot. I was Any trying season, to tell you, you the you last listen. two weeks about Boston College, and you didn't want to listen. You know, it's Boston no, no, no. College. I, 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 I was worried about Boston College. Trust me. Um, they always it always bothers me that per, because the first game is always a pro, it's always problematic because you don't get you don't get any preseason in, in college. I mean, ask Missouri, ask Missouri how that week one goes, right? Huh. You know, ask these teams that 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 got that got beaten. Now, now it went marvelous. Virginia Tech got beaten by a team that was. But Virginia Tech got beaten by the team with eight and five last year. I mean, it's not like it's not like Boston College stuck up on anybody. I mean, no. they were pretty good. Yeah, they beat they beat Tech last year. So yeah, it's not mm-hmm. like it's not like that was a you know a, a, a huge shock. But when you turn the ball over five times, that and then you and you can't stop them near the end of the game. Tech had a chance at the end of the game to to, to stop them, get the ball back and, and a couple times and, and couldn't stop them. That's the more problematic part, I think, to me was the. The lack of 
intensity on deep, uh, the defensive line to be able to, to make stops. When, when you knew you knew what they were going to do, you knew they weren't going to pass the ball. So that's a little bit problematic. So, yeah, Virginia Tech owed him in. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't tell most people to waste their time on that one. Um, but, but let me comment first. Let me go back and comment on the Army-Michigan game. Yeah. I, that, that, to me, is one is, is must-see TV. Only because Army's so unique in, in what they do and how they do it. So to me, that would be one that I think would be interesting to watch, especially all the with all of the pressure that Jim Harbaugh's under at Michigan. You know, he's had decent seasons. He has not beaten Ohio State. He hasn't won a division. You know, hasn't gotten the playoffs. Hasn't really competed for a national title. You know, he's he's he has he has to do something, and. This Army game might be one. He might, I, I'm not sure they might be, not be looking ahead a little bit to the to the Big Ten season. So I, I really think that, that that's one to to uh, keep an eye on. Yeah, I, it, it could be an interesting game. But I mean, are you picking? You're picking Michigan to win that game, right? Is that what I understand, though? I I haven't made my picks yet, and last week I had a. Uh, I had something come up that that um, uh, precluded me being able to post my blog. Um, uh, I had some family issues come up late last week, so this week I will be doing a full full prediction blog. I haven't I haven't, I haven't started yet. I got to look at the look at the, some of the statistics and see. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean today, if you, if you made if you held a gun to my head and made me pick tonight, I, I would probably pick Michigan primarily because their defense is really good. I think they can adapt. They they can you know Harbaugh, Harbaugh to adapt defensively to, to stopping Army, but you know if they get on a roll, you, know, you don't get the ball very often against them. You know they they're going to possess the ball, they're going to run the clock, and so you get you get in a close ball game. You know, and Michigan's not exactly or hasn't historically under Harbaugh been that explosive offensively. Yeah, and they weren't really this weekend. They they struggled in the first half against Middle Tennessee, who who made a game of it for probably about three quarters. So it, you know, it, it, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so again, it's the first that's game. My point is is you know, Army's kind of an ugly. I mean, they can they can turn the game ugly, and and you know, they're gonna. They, they could they can cause some problems for Michigan, and, and this is an Army team, by the way. It's not just their style. You know, they were a, a what a, an eight eight or nine wins team last year. Yeah, they were ranked at one point. Um, yeah, I mean, this is that's a they, they've won two in a row over uh, they've won two in a row over over Navy. Snapped that long losing streak, uh, and so you know they yeah they were they were eleven and two last year. Okay, with a bowl win over Houston, they beat Houston seventy to fourteen in a bowl game. So, you know, this is a this is a really good team, and 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 their one of their losses, one of their two losses last year, was in overtime at Oklahoma. So, th- this is a this is a very very dangerous team. By the way, with seven. Seven offensive starters back off a team that you know, you'd expect experience to be very important, right? Because of the style that they run, including their quarterback. This is this is one scary team. I mean, you know, now now Houston, as we saw the other night, isn't isn't that stout defensively, but to put up seventy on them, uh, you know, and to win eleven games, you know. Now their schedule wasn't, you know, isn't all that great, you know. But they uh, they did they should travel to Oklahoma, um, so you know they don't play a lot of Power Five teams. Uh, when they do, they tend to lose. So I, I, I'd have to I'd have to you know give the nod to Michigan because of Michigan's defensive prowess. But don't don't be surprised if 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 you know if you turn on the television at some point and. And you're watching Army, you know, you're watching Army, you know, click down the, 
click down the clock on a on a twenty three to twenty win over Michigan, something like that. I, I would not. I would absolutely not be surprised. All right. So another game. Well, it's a be at least it's a marquee game for the Pac twelve. Stanford and SC play. Well, unfortunately, USC lost their starting quarterback, JT Daniels, to a a torn ACL. Uh, So he's out. And so their backup, who came in uh, uh, against uh, uh, San Jose State, no, excuse me, Fresno State. Yeah. Did not look good. Okay, he did did not look. Okay, he had flashes where he looked good, um, and so I think that's a question mark. Given that, and given given Stanford's defense against Northwestern, and uh, I would have to give the the edge now to Stanford. Where a week ago I probably would have given it to USC because of the quarterback situation. But now I have to, I have to give now Stanford, I think also lost their starting quarterback if I'm not mistaken. And so they'll both yeah. be playing with, with their backups, but, but, the, but the quarterback at USC is way more important than the quarterback at Stanford. You know, Stanford's more of a running team, defensive team. Uh, USC relies on that. Now they're going to get another kid. Now the kid that, that, uh, uh, the, the the true freshman that's going to be starting is really good, and uh, he actually uh, finished high school in December, and he was in spring camp and was competing with JT Daniels for the for the uh, starting job, and, and from all indications, where it was it, it was close, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a slam dunk for the returning Daniels. So uh, I think given a week of practice, maybe some more confidence, you know, he may be pretty good. But um, I just, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sold on bringing in a, a a true freshman quarterback who wasn't prepared through fall practice to be the starter against a, against a Stanford defense that you know historically is very very good. Um, and, and this year is is. Probably no exception. So I'm going to watch the game. Uh, I, I think it should be a good, should be a good ball game. It's going to be one of the games that I, I'm definitely going to make sure that I, uh, if I don't watch it live, I'll go back and watch it again. It's again because theory, both these teams with the way they recruit, they should be able to have quality backups, especially SC. So. Uh, I look for it to be a good competitive game, but there's a lot of rumbles out of Southern Cal. Uh, that part of L.A. wants to see, in a sense, SC do bad this year so they can get rid of the coach and, and make a run for Urban Meyer or another coaching candidate at the position. I mean, I mean, how, how do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, I hear stuff like that, and, and you know, if 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 somebody's rooting against their own team to see somebody get fired, my this is just my this is just my opinion on that. That's I, I don't like that. I mean, you know, I, you know, if you're a fan of your team, you're a fan of your team. And, you know, if they win, they win. If they lose, they lose. What happens, the administration will take care of it, right? So, you know, I think fans get so invested in their teams that they, they think they have some kind of decision-making capability and they don't. Um, you know, root for your team and see, see what happens. Uh, I, I, I think Clay Helton is definitely on the hot seat. I mean, I, I think he needs to win the South to keep his job. I, I really do. Um, but... Lynn Swan, the athletic director there, likes Clay Helton. He's publicly supported him. Now, Lynn Swan's not exactly on on great ground either. So you know, <laughs> you could see some. And, and, and USC is USC has not been shy 
in, in making a lot of changes at all levels at any point in time. Yeah, we've seen it, you know, at time and time again at USC. So, you know, all those situations are even kind of on the on, even on the tarmac. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Uh, Pat Hayden came to win. I mean, yeah. So, uh, yeah. is is listen, is USC as talented as any team? in the conference? Probably so. They recruit well. They've got great skill position. You look at the team. It, of course, I think just putting on that uniform you know, deducts like three-tenths off of 40 times just by putting the uniform on. Because <laughs> they look fast. I mean, you think, right, you, you think of O.J. and Charles White and, you know, Reggie Bush and, you know, yeah. just, just the uniform. You go, wow, they're fast. You know, um, but, yeah, yeah, listen, Stanford's not explosive enough offensively, really, you know, to, to, to be able to handle, uh, withstand turnovers and stuff like that. So, you know, so if USC, I mean, last year they beat USC 17-3. to That was the game. Okay? And then, and then, then Stanford kind of got on a roll offensively and started scoring some points. Um you know, they, they, they scored some – they made some big numbers late in the season. But that was that was also Oregon State, UCLA, I mean, who were who were bad last year. So, I don't know. We'll see. I think that – that um, I think Stanford I – give them, I give them the edge because of the quarterback situation at USC. But that being said, the kid is really talented. And, you know, he could – he could, with a week of practice with the starters, come in with more confidence. Uh, and with that skill position players, that speed, USC has some speed, too. Uh, you know, they could, they, they could, they, they could take the win. And this is a toss-up to begin with. So, you know, I, you know these, these teams are... By the, rank, by the ratings, power ratings early in the preseason, they weren't that close. Stanford was clearly in the lead, but... Um, you know, I think USC looked they looked pretty good against Fresno State the other night. Um, you know, they struggled after after Daniels went out, but yeah. So I'm still going to stick with Stanford in a close game. Uh, but if USC's backup quarterback shows up, then I think they I think they have a really really good chance to win. Yeah, I I I agree with that. I think Stanford tries to keep this game. Low score and slow paced, and uh, and just work to run the clock out. I think that's that's going to be the name of the game for Stanford in this game. All right, uh, another game that uh, I've kind of got, you know, uh, safety pinned up here. Uh, Central Florida heads down to Boca Raton to play Florida Atlantic. And it just makes you wonder, is this a point where, because, you know, FAU looked competitive and looked like they were going to come back on Ohio State at certain points. Obviously didn't. And USC has just looked so dominant and like they belong among the Power Five schools over the last, you know, two and a half years. So, uh, two years or so. So, is this now, this now should be a moment where we should see USC have similar results as Ohio State. They get the recruits, they get the talent, they got the, the coaching, they have, you know, quality recruiting classes for the last five years, you know? And uh, right now, we, we, we should be seeing that with the success that they've had. I mean, um, they had, I saw this post that U, UCF has won it was 106 consecutive games in season, what was it? Something like something ridiculous. I mean, in conference, in season, I'll, I'll pull it up here. 
but the long story short is this shouldn't be technically shouldn't be as competitive of a game as as one would think. But at the same token, Lane Kiffin should have FAU at a point to where it can compete with South Florida in reality. But in rea- in the mindset of where UCF is is thought to be, it should be a boat race. So I guess it's it's a battle of perceptions is really what this ends up being. What do you see happening in uh, UCF versus FAU down in Boca? Oh, that's, 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 that's an absolute you know beatdown. I mean, listen, UCF. Is, is, I think, one of the top ten teams in the country. And they have just demonstrated that. The problem is they, they're just not in a conference that's, that it, with a schedule that's going to allow them to be recognized. And their schedule this year is weak. I mean, they, they haven't been able to – I don't think they even have anybody really going out. They don't have any, any real good non-conference uh, uh, games. I mean, I mean they, they certainly don't have what Cincinnati has with with playing you know UCLA and Ohio State or even with – even with Houston going and play at Oklahoma, but you know they are they are a top ten team, and they just have to and they have to beat these teams down. I, I think that the longer the longer term question is, and we talk about you and I talk about this a lot, is how long is it until until UCF and some of these other schools um, get back into Power Five? In, in the case of Houston, get back into a Power Five conference. In the case of Cincinnati. And you have to get into a power five conference, you know, through expansion or whatever. Um, you know, when does that happen? Because until that happens, UCF can, will never sniff the playoffs, whether they deserve it or not. Right? I mean, th- that's not really the question. Is 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 you know, do they deserve it? Probably so a shot. Yeah. So one of two things has to happen: either they get into a power five conference, which I think, I mean, I think UCF could probably win. The Atlantic, the, the 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 ACC Coastal this year, they could probably win that win that division, right? I mean, they have a shot. I mean, they're they're ranked higher than anybody else in the Atlantic in the ACC Coastal. Yeah, especially with Miami losing the first game to Florida, right? Yeah. So given that. The question for me is, when does that happen? You know, when when do we actually you know see that move expansion? Because you know, th- th- this situation with the Big Twelve having ten teams just cannot continue for much longer. Not in my estimation. It it, it creates a it creates a, a real um, inequality. Not to quite the right word, but you know, when you when you look at you know fourteen teams in the Big Ten and fourteen teams in the big in the ACC and fourteen teams in the SEC and you know twelve in the Pac twelve you got ten sitting out there in, a, in what's you know a Power Five conference. Come on, guys, get to fourteen schools and you know you know add add Houston and UCF and you know look up some more schools. Let's let's get this thing to where to, to the so the school like UCF can get what they deserve, which is a shot. Or the other thing that happens is they expand the playoffs to eight games, and then UCF eight teams, and UCF gets in. You know, either as a large team or as, as the uh, as the Power Five, or as excuse me, as as a representative from Group of Five. Which is, I mean, so if if, if the last two years, if if the if the, if the Playoffs for eight teams. UCF would have been in, I think, both times, at least once. Yeah, I, I, I think they go down and you. blow the doors up at the year. If they're in the ACC or yeah. the Big Twelve, yeah. Okay. My argument was the the year that they yeah. got went thirteen and zero. If they were in the Big Twelve that year, they probably win the Big Twelve that year, and they're one of the four teams. I mean, because if you go and look, right. if you look. Right. Because remember, my 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 thing again, the Big Twelve has kind of made it obvious that they're going to stay with ten teams, and the AAC actually announced you know last week that with UConn leaving, they're over the weekend they announced that they're going to go to 
just an 11 team conference, and they're going to go to eight, um, eight, again, sticking with eight conference games, but they're going to go round robin style. Um, so there will be two teams that they don't play every year, but they're going to go with eight. And I think the reason that they're going to go with eight is because they're trying to get two, two or three power five schools on their schedule each year. But then, you know, still having those kind of you know, lower level teams that they can beat up on to have a, a, a give me. But that's the thing is, and the fact of the matter is, is out of if you take all the power five conferences, Take the bottom half of the, the conference. It don't matter which conference you pick. Just take the bottom half. And that's not going to be any different than they could lose to a, to the group of five team on any given day. It, 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 that's just where the group oh, of five question. schools are at. And each of these conferences are really judged on their top two, three schools. You know, and that's it. You got, you got Alabama and you got so. Georgia. Really in the SEC, you got Oklahoma, and I guess if you really want to say Texas, you know, SEC, you got to go farther than that. You've got to, you've got to go. What is that? You got to go to LSU. You got to go to Auburn. No, Auburn, I, right? I don't. No, yeah. I'm not going to go to LSU. Go. Has LSU competed no, for? Top ten. Has have they competed in the LSU's West? They haven't even came close to competing in the West. Because if you throw LSU in there, then you got to throw Texas A&M. A few years ago, is competing against Alabama. I mean, well, you, you got to. Yeah, but no, you no, I, you know, I, you know, I don't put them in there. And, and, and I would, and, and I would argue. Well, I, I would argue. I would argue that that the conferences are judged by their top four or five teams, not their top two or three. I mean, let's take the Big Ten, right? Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Wisconsin, Iowa. You know, it's really been Ohio State. Okay, that's that's been Ohio State, okay. and then Michigan State. Those are the only two that's been in the the final four teams. And Michigan State, that was just a really yeah, an but, up year. Right. Yeah, but you got to look at the depth overall. Of the guy, Michigan has kind of been the better of the two teams, and even then, Penn State has really been better than them. But, you know, when you have Michigan, yeah, Michigan I mean, State, and Ohio State in the same side of your division, it's tough to get into the conference, you know. So, Penn State. So, you, yeah. could, you could really say it's been Ohio State. The last three years, Penn State's been up there really more consistently, but Michigan State's been there. But Michigan, really, despite the hype, hasn't been it. It's really just been Ohio State. Michigan State is is well, would essentially be the LSU. Oh, sure, they got up into the well, the, the playoff, well, but what does that mean? Hold on, hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Hold on a second. They got boat race. Hold on a second. Okay, you're, you're you're talking two different things here. Okay, first you you made a premise that that conferences are judged by the top two or three teams in their conference. Yeah, and then you're talking about just the one team that's made it to the to the playoffs. Those are that's two different things. If there's a dominant team in the conference, which, by the way, yes, the SEC's had Alabama. Yeah. Although Auburn won a national championship. Okay. In 2002. But, uh, in that course of Saban's career. No. Two, no. 2012. 2012. Sorry. I meant 2012. Yeah. Okay. That's been since Saban. Seven um, years ago. You know. So, it, but, 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 no, no, so, so, but you're making two different arguments. If your argument is, how and Bo, and Bo Nix the was there. Have actually he made was, it to the playoffs. He was 10. Hold on, let me finish. If you're, hold on, if you're long, hold on, just, let me finish. If you're, if, if you're, if you if what you're saying is, look at how many teams from a conference have actually made the college football playoffs and judge a conference by that, by the depth of their conference by that, that's a different story than saying, a conference is judged by how good their top two or three teams are. Those are two different arguments, right? Because because if you look at look at the Pac-12, they've only made they've only made the the comp the the playoffs once. 
right? Ohio State's made it twice. I mean, Ohio State's made it twice. The Big Ten's made it twice. Michi- no, and Michigan State right? made it once. The SEC, the SEC and ACC have made it every year. Yeah. So if you if so if if you go by that, right? If that's your criteria, then the SEC and ACC are the two strongest conferences. We know that's not the case because we know the ACC is not the strong, not not the second strongest conference. And, and in fact, you know, I make the case this year that it's the, that it's the it's the weakest Tower Five conference. And I would actually make the case that this year it may even be below the American in terms of depth of, of conference. Um, but no, I'm just saying that. But now, I'm saying. But, the but ACC if, but goes wanted, the way Clemson goes. The SEC goes the way Alabama goes. Although Georgia's really close. Well, that's today. That's the well, last the three years. The that's the fact. The last the three years. ACC as well. Well, the playoffs only been four years old. Uh, no, keep going. Twenty fourteen. Five years, sorry. Five years, five years, five years. It's five years of, of there's been twenty teams. There's been twenty teams in the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. So but but if if the way I think that conferences should be judged really though is is their is by their depth and and, and if you look at the Big Ten for instance which I believe the Big Ten is actually the best conference in, in college football. Because they because their top is really good and their bottom isn't all that bad except for Rutgers. I mean Illinois is not not horrible. Indiana's not horrible. Right? Vanderbilt's bad. Arkansas's bad. <laughs> right? Oh Miss is bad. Okay, I mean they're weaker than any of the bottom of the. So, you know, the Pac-12, the Pac-12, unfortunately for them, is a very deep conference. But they're all like, you know, they're all between twenty and sixty. I mean they don't have a. Colorado's improved this year. They don't have a. They don't have a, a really. Okay, Oregon State. They have one bad team. Oregon State. But the rest are pretty competitive. You know, they're five, six wins. Some of them, they kind of water on the bowl thing. Um, you know, so the Pac-12, but I think the Big Ten's the, the, the toughest, week in, week out. Uh, look, it, it was shown last year in the West. You know, that was, a tough, that was a tough division last year. It's even tougher this year. So I think there's a lot of different ways to look at conferences. I mean, obviously, the, the, the SEC took a big hit last week, but you know, none of their top teams lost. It was it was the bottom feeders. I mean Tennessee is, you know, I think Tennessee's next to last, picked next to last in the East. You know. Ole Miss was picked next to last in the West. They lost. Missouri, uh, they got a lot of they got a lot of a lot of publicity because of Kelly Bryant, but they're obviously not great yet. So they're not, you know, they're not regarded as, you know, super. So, you know, I, I agree with the SEC. You know, the, the bottom half of the league is, you know, as bad as any. The ACC is abysmal. I don't, I don't care how you cut the ACC, how you slice it, how you dice it. It's a bad conference right now. Ninety seconds. Clemson, there's nothing. Well, let me. Uh... Oh, what happened to Florida State the other day? Did you watch that game? I did. Speak, speaking of that, I mean, I'm going to bring in. Uh, I want to bring in Florida State fan. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got. To, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to bail. So I told you. Good. Uh, oh, one more game though. Yeah. Texas. Texas LSU. Sixty seconds. That's the. That's the. That's the premier game of the week. LSU. LSU. Yep. Yeah. I'm with you. Should be a good game, though. Because I mean, gonna, like I, I said, I, I do want to. I do want to hear. Although, I do want to hear James's. I do want to hear James's take on the on the Florida State uh, 
collapse, to put it nicely, on Saturday. Is 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 Willie, is Willie on the bus up there too? Because he was down on the bus at USF, and now he's at FSU. Is, is, is he singing the bus song up there? What was 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 going on up there? You know, in in Tallahassee, good, good things don't happen on buses. Didn't a kid die from from band hazing on a bus in Tallahassee? It, I mean, I don't know, but but Willie's Willie's seat's really hot. Willie's seat's pretty hot right now. I would suspect. Oregon's looking good right now. But I'm going to go ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'm just going to listen. I'm going to listen to James. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'll talk to you guys. I'll uh, hopefully be uh, back with you guys next week. All right. Sounds good. Okay, man. Okay. All right. All right. Are you there, James? I guess not. I guess not. Oh, but you know, just speaking on on on, uh, on Willie Tiger, that I mean, the situation is not looking good for him there. Um, it it wasn't it wasn't the best situation for him to come into, but uh, it it was definitely a situation. Uh, where, you know, he could, he, 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 you get good recruits. He, he got a good, uh, you got a good history. And, uh, it, it was kind of his situation was it, it, the, the dream job he wanted. You know, he didn't necessarily go out from USF on a good note. He lost to middle Tennessee. He lost to the Hilltoppers, or Western Kentucky, sorry, the Hilltoppers, which, where he played and he coached in the Miami Beach Bowl. And he leaves. He goes to Oregon. There's this dismal year there. And then from there, they, they hire him. They hire him at FSU. You know, I, I'm not really for sure. What, uh, what, what he's going to do different or, or how he can really pull this out, or turn this around. I mean, he has the talent there that he needs. Again, again, this isn't a knock on them because they lost to Boise State. Boise State's a good program. And you could argue they've had just as good a history over the last decade as as FSU. So it's not like they lost to some bum team. Boise Street, Boise State travels well to the East Coast, which most West Coast teams don't. But they seem to travel well to the West Coast. They're ready in the West Coast. They're prepared on the West Coast. Well, this Boise State team was fo- was preparing for the weather by sitting in saunas for hours. Their practice field, they turned up to 108 degrees and was constantly had like pumping humidity into it, you know, trying to make this uncomfortable environment. And they just showed that they were able to prepare and, and then execute better than FSU. Um, again, the season is young. And, I mean, Willie Taggart's going to have to make some decisions on what direction he's he's taking this program. And if, if this is where he's going to stay. Because the fan base that he has is expecting wins. Not close losses to good teams. You lose to five. To Boise State, you lost. That's what they're looking at. 
I mean, Justin Blackman, I mean, he did about what he could. He was 23 for 33. You know, roughly, you know, was, was 60 some percent. Averaging almost a first down per completion. Threw for 327 yards and three touchdowns. You know? But we need this offensive line to step up and, and do more. This looked terrible. Because he rushed for negative 25. He's getting hit way too much. He's getting rushed way too much. I mean, as a team, they accumulated 99 yards of, of rushing. That's with Cam Akers running for 106 yards and a touchdown. You know? It, it doesn't, and, and the thing is, okay, I, I have to say something. With the Capital I've noticed, Adventure card, you earn unlimited double miles on every purchase. Every- I've noticed with with Willie's teams, he doesn't he doesn't bring in his his player by committee. He doesn't do his rotations the same way. That creates more depth the same way as you used to see with Jimbo, as as you see with 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 Nick Saban, the way you see with Dabu Sweeney, you know. The way you see with with smart, you know, the way that you see with the top tier, top echelon, you know, coaches that rotate guys in. This is why the uh, Clemson defensive line, who's had actually quite a bit of experience in playing time, was able to is able to jump in. In Alabama, same situation, a lot of playing time and experience. Uh, despite not as many starts, different looks, different concepts, you know, different, you know, uh, different rotations help give different guys experience. You know, you, you, you look at just for example, for this, like the safety situations, you have a lot of guys that maybe it's safety. You're comfortable enough in their cover skills that you have them down at a nickel. You have them playing nickel cause you're comfortable with that cause they can cover. Some guys you have will drop down as linebacker, an outside linebacker in some sets. Maybe because you want more DBs or, or big bodies there to cover tight ends, you know? Every situation comes up with something different. It might just be Willie Taggart's ability to manage a roster. Because... FSU got shut out in the second half. They were leading 31 to 20 at halftime. Boise came out, pitched a set out in the second half, and outscores them 17 to nothing in the second half, which gave them the six point win. You know, we. This tells me Willie can't make adjustments. Willie is not making adjustments. We we are not gonna say this is the only game. I mean, I see the reports are you know, dehydration possible factor in FSU loss. Listen, if you're the team that is home and play and practice and are supposed to be accustomed to the humidity and the heat, you know to drink flipping fluids. You shouldn't be the team that's dehydrated. You know? Some people say, you know, you take for granted something. So right now, I'm in Florida. I'm in central Florida. 
I am literally miles. I'm not. I'm not in a thunderstorm watch. I'm in Central Florida. I'm not in the tropical storm or thunder. I'm not in any kind of watch or warning where I am. I am miles away from literally only a few miles away from the edge of the tropical storm warning. I'm on the air. You know, I'm not worried about where the storm is at this moment. If stuff changes, I'll worry about that. But I'm prepared if this storm decides to dump a bunch of rain with sandbags or inflatable dams or whatever you want to put up. I I have stuff. I have measures to take. I also buy my properties in areas where it's least likely to flood. And I have flood insurance. And I have a two-story home. So, most valuable things, I can get off the ground, away from floods. You know? It, you know, People, just, you think you prepare for things. I'm not having an issue of the dehydration being the native Florida team. Here, I'm not a native Floridian. I'm from Nebraska. You know, people get so worried about hurricanes. It's it's a big-ass thunderstorm. I've had tornadoes go through my backyard. Literally ripped out a tree. And as a kid, flung, twisted up and flung my swing set. Four houses down. It sounds like a train. I don't know. Maybe some people are less prepared for stuff like this. And evidently, if Florida State's coming up with excuses, like, I think it was dehydration. They literally have guys on the sidelines that can give you IVs. During the game. At halftime. Before the game. After the game. But you're dehydrated? You don't want to drink Gatorade, do you? Is that what it is? You don't want to seem in support of the Florida Gators because of Gatorade? I don't know. So, this week, I'm going to keep my eye on the game. Florida State should win. Against Louisiana Monroe. I don't know. (laughs) We'll see. Louisiana Monroe is coming off a 31-9 victory over Grambling. Grambling and FSU are not the same thing. This should be an easy victory. For FSU, with the talent they have. Hopefully they're hydrated this week. And have a game plan. And are prepared to make adjustments. But we'll see. Um, Okay. Uh, a few other games. Uh, getting to a couple other games this week. Uh, Vanderbilt Purdue should be a, a, a pretty interesting game. Uh, Purdue has massively, in a way, kind of like Willie Taggart has, 
um, but not as epic, ha- have really underperformed. They lost to a, a, a sneaky good Nevada team this, uh, this past weekend, and now they're up against um, Vanderbilt. And then they have T. Then they have TCU, and then they're into conference play. But this this Purdue team has some decent talent. In particularly, one of their skill players. Uh, Rondell Moore. This guy is is all American like. He's not there. I I don't know I don't know why they 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 do it. The guy is is tremendous. I mean, he had eleven receptions for one hundred and twenty four yards and a touchdown. Eleven and a half yards per catch average. The guy is freakishly athletic. He's fast. And he can really change the dynamic of a game quick. He is a playmaker. But this this uh this boilermaker team needs to figure out how they can get consistency out of this team. Because what they lack the most is the consistency as far as winning. Um, They can sling a rock all over the yard. Uh, and uh, their running game is decent. They usually split between, kind of between the running back and the and the uh, the running back Xander uh, Horvish. Xander Horvish. I mean, he averages about three and a half, four yards a carry over the last couple of years, and you want three yards. That's what it is. Coaches tell you, get me three yards. And at the at the worst case scenario, I'm at fourth and one. And we should be able to go for it and make it. That's what they want. Three yards. So at three and a half yards of carry, you know, that's even that's a first down. You're getting a first down. With that player, three and a half yards of carry. That's what you're looking for. That's what the coach was looking for. Elijah Sindelar, their quarterback, is uh, is underrated in, in a number of ways. So, but can this defense? Keep teams from scoring. They have talent on their defense as well. Marcus Marcus Bailey, to be most specific. Linebacker Marcus Bailey. <coughs> Probably the best player on their defense. He's a dude. He'll go he'll go in the first couple of days of the NFL draft for sure. You know, you can't you can't rely on a linebacker to do the work of the whole defense. You know, they need some more effort out of the secondary. Who got torched by Nevada for two hundred and ninety five yards and three touchdowns through the air. And then gave up another 
109 yards on the ground. Nevada did not outgain them or outpossess them, but Purdue turned the ball over five times. Three lost fumbles and two interceptions. It's these things, it's these turnovers and the inconsistency in play that kills this Purdue team. But again, we're up in another week against a team that you think you'd think they would be able to get by that we're going to throw up our arms in question and make that coach's seat even even hotter with uh, Vanderbilt at home. They should win that. That game's going to be at noon on uh, Big Ten Network. Which you can also see by, uh, I believe, with the Fox Sports app. Because it has the Big Ten on the Fox Sports app. So you should be able to watch it on the Fox Sports app. Big Ten on the Fox Sports app. Or the BTN app. Or BTN channel as well. Is this too many idiotically close games? You see, I'll throw I'll throw the Cornhuskers in there this week too uh, for a game that that should be that will be closer than it should be. This game was allowed to be a game last year because it, it's a new team. That was trying to figure some stuff out. You know, new coach, new 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 system, new quarterback, new new everything. Just about from so many aspects of the game. Uh, this year, it, it should be a bit different. The line on this game. I've seen sway. ESPN is giving the home field advantage to Colorado. They're saying they should win 51.2% chance to win. You know, if you go and look at the odds... It it tells you a little bit different story. Nebraska is a four and a half point favorite. No, that was I, I think it was Vegas Insider. Can you pull that? Can you pull that back up for me? Yeah. So it opened. Yeah. So it's three and a half now. It opened at seven and a half point favorite for Nebraska. And I'm seeing it pretty much three and a half, 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 four. Statisticians is giving the Huskers four points. A four point favorite. So. It doesn't matter. I mean, they're saying they're a slight favorite. The over-under opened on this one at 62.5. For the under, um, seeing 65, 64.5, and and 65, yeah. Pretty much the same across the board. It hasn't hasn't really changed. 62.5, 64.5, so... What they're saying is these teams 
may not stop each other from scoring. All right. All right, here here's the thing. Nebraska has a better defense than Nevada. If Nevada gets five turnovers in the game, it should be safe to say that Nebraska can get a couple. I mean, even in this game last year, Nebraska had flashes on defense. And with another year of experience, bigger, stronger, faster, you should see that come through again. You should. Nebraska knows what they're looking at, not only because they played this team last year, but seeing how this team ended up struggling against uh, against Colorado State their opening week. Again, that was a very close game up until the second half. Where Colorado pulled away. Yeah, they they understand where what they're looking at against this team. So the offense is heavily predicated around uh, their their wide receivers. That's the big thing that this offense looks at is in the passing game. Okay? Colorado threw they were I mean they were out gained through the air. Uh but they were thirteen for twenty for two hundred and thirty two yards. All right. No interceptions. Now, Colorado put up 243 yards on the ground. And again, the second half is where they ran away with this game. Fontenet, their running back, 19 carries, 125 yards, and three touchdowns. He had a good game. But is this what Nebraska is going to expect? I don't think so. You know, is let's see, is why is this not working? Okay. I mean, the guy, he ran for 43 yards last year. He's he's pretty new at starting. <coughs> he's a sophomore. And I I don't see the same thing happening against the Nebraska defense. Truly, truly where the line should probably be closer to like 13 and a half is where it should be. With the expectations of where Nebraska should be at this point, we should be a 13 and a half point favorite on the road. So right now, if the offense can figure their muddle out and the defense... can't just continue to put the throttle down, I would take Nebraska to win and to cover. Last week, (coughs) 
I, I said Nebraska wins, but doesn't cover. They didn't cover. I think they were 34.5-point favorites or 36.5. It depends on where you looked. I didn't see that happening. It didn't. But this should be, this will probably end up being a lot closer game than it should be. And, but Nebraska should win by a couple touchdowns. Should. We'll see. Let's see what do we got here left. Uh, time left in the show. That's 20 minutes? Okay, cool. Yeah. Did you have the highlight? Did you have the highlight game? All right. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'm under the weather, man, this week. I had this. I finished it. I had this uh, throat therapy tea. As you can hear, it, it didn't. It really didn't. The honey I drank earlier, I think, did more for me than the actual tea. Um, my big question marks this week. How do these embarrassed teams bounce back? That's really the big question. You know, how, how, how's, how's Kelly Bryant in, in Missouri? How are they going to bounce back this week? What, what are we going to see? out of the Missouri Tigers moving forward. Because I thought they were in position to make a run for the SEC East. You know, maybe finish second. I mean, they played Georgia tough last year. Thought they'd be able to take that step forward. And uh, evidently looked ahead and are having to take a few steps back. But, like Mike Tyson says, everybody has a game plan to get punched in the face. Let's see how Missouri rebounds from getting punched in the face. One game, okay, so I'm going to go down and and give you my picks for the week uh, this week. So uh, just straight down, you write all those down? Okay, so uh, I have Ohio beating Pitt, Ohio State beating Cincinnati. Um, I think Army and Michigan are a game for a half, and Michigan State pulls away. Not again. They went by two touchdowns or more. Uh, Rutgers, Iowa. Uh, I think at some point in time, Rutgers tries to make a run, uh, but falls short. Syracuse and Maryland. I think this is probably one of the most interesting games of the entire week. This is Maryland who seems to be this kind of a giant slayer the last couple years, beating Texas, taking Ohio State into overtime last season. You know, they put up 79 points last week. It's a lot of points. 28 points in the first, 28 in the second, and then let their, you know, their walk-ons play. The coach is legit. Fleck is uh, Fleck is is used to be at Ohio State. He was an interim coach at Ohio State, so he's a good coach. Clearly, um, I'm going to go ahead and pick Maryland in an upset over Syracuse. Old Dominion, Virginia Tech. I have almost lost all confidence in Virginia Tech. And I think they are pretty close to that themselves. They're at home this weekend against Old Dominion. 
they'll win. I won't go further than that. UAB, Akron. UAB won a close game last week uh, against Alabama State, which was way closer than it should have been uh, for a team that, you know, isn't but, what, a year removed from a bowl game? What did they have last year? I think it was three losses. They're ten and three last year. Um, so to struggle out the gate like this isn't really characteristic of them. I have UAB beating an, an Akron team. That's that's is going through its own struggles right now. Seems to be a, a pretty young young Akron team who just got boat raced last week by Illinois, 42-3. to So I got UAB beating the Akron Zips in that game. All right. uh, Skip. I have Southern losing to Memphis. A blowout. West Virginia, Missouri. Again, kind of a similar game. I think Missouri bounces back and beats West Virginia. Tight game. Way too many points scored for anybody's comfort. South Carolina beats Charleston Southern. Purdue limits their turnovers and beats Vanderbilt. K-State womps Bowling Green. North Carolina State beats Western Carolina. Utah stomps Northern Illinois. South Florida and Georgia Tech. Boy. Where do you go from here? Both these programs, one with a new coach, one maybe looking for a new coach. This program has seemingly started to decline. I'm going to take USF in a narrow margin over Georgia Tech in Atlanta. In Death Valley, North Carolina, number one Clemson will host number 12 Texas A&M. Something tells me Texas A&M can pull this off in Death Valley. And they have a good chance they can win this game. I'm going to go pessimistic on them. I picked Clemson to win at home. Wisconsin, Central Michigan, Wisconsin wins. Nebraska, Colorado, like I already said, Nebraska, I'll take, uh, I'll, I'll take Nebraska to win and to cover. They're minus four and a half, three and a half, four. I'll take them to cover. Like I said, the line should be at 14 and a half. But it's not. Uh, let's see here. Illinois womps Yukon. Boston College womps Richmond. Illinois womps Eastern Illinois. Mississippi State wins a close one over Southern Mississippi. Alabama, New Mexico State. This is the one nobody saw. No, I'm kidding. Alabama throttles them. Georgia throttles Murray State. Baylor beats uh, UT San Antonio. 
UCLA gets their first win of the season over a struggling San Diego State team. Washington State beats Northern Colorado. Florida State finds a way to not give the game away against Louisiana Monroe. Duke beats North Carolina A&T on the field in football, but loses the drum line. Eastern Carolina wins over Gardner Webb. In a game that's probably way too close for anybody's comfort, but because of familiarity between coaches. Uh, let's see. Oklahoma beats South Dakota. Blah. UCF wins by two touchdowns over FAU. But it's going to be a close game for most of the game. Should be. Be entertaining. Um, let's see here. What else? We got BYU, Tennessee. Neither of these schools looked particularly good last weekend. BYU did for a first quarter and a half. Really? Tennessee is just... Yeah, it's not... It's not turning out at all like they hoped. This is a game Tennessee should be a clear-cut favorite in. But this is a team that lost by 20-some points to Vanderbilt last season. Found a way to beat Auburn. And and Kentucky and struggled against Charlotte, UNC Charlotte, and got blown out by West Virginia. It's really tough. A mutual. It's really tough to see what to expect from this team. It's kind of like Northwestern. Nowadays, I, I don't know what to think. BYU should be a victory, but if it's a loss, I'm not surprised. I'm going to say Tennessee wins that game. I don't even know what the line is on. What's the line on that game? You guys pull Tennessee BYU line. What's the betting line on that? Tennessee. It opened Tennessee minus one. They're favored by a point. By by a PAT. It's up to three and a half, three, three, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, three, three and a half. So three and a half. They're saying by about a field goal. Tennessee should win. Ah, uh, maybe the minus one is more accurate. I'll just pick Tennessee to win. I, I don't know. I'm not going to say they cover. <laughs> I guess I can't say they cover. In favor, they open by one point at home. How are you open one point favorite at home by a non-conference team? That really didn't even have, hasn't really had... Oh. Yeah. Maybe that coach they ran out. They got hired and ran out of town. Maybe he would have been a better pick. I don't know. Maybe he would have been a better pick. Maybe it'd have been a better hire. I don't know. Uh 
<sighs> All right, so let me finish up here. Kansas wins big over Coastal Carolina. Oklahoma State over McNeese State. LSU over Texas. Auburn over Tulane. In a game at times, it's um, going to look a little closer than it should be. Florida over UT Martin. Penn State over Buffalo. Uh, I think, actually, Oregon is going to do surprisingly well uh, against Nevada. No, no, they're not surprising. They're just going to do good. I think they win by probably 20 points. Uh, Do you have a line on that one? Oregon, Nevada. Oregon, Nevada, the Ducks, the Oregon game. Oregon, you got it? Well, it's the only game, Oregon's playing, how's it broken up? Let me see that. Yeah, yeah. I want to see. Just show me the quick line. Where is that? Where is that? Anyways, I'm gonna move on. Why did? Why didn't we have these already? Anyways, Oregon. All right. Michigan State over Western Michigan. Kentucky over Eastern Michigan in a close game. Ole Miss over Arkansas because at this point, Arkansas just donates football games. Seems like. All right. uh, Houston wins. Over Prairie View, Miami, North Carolina. Interesting. I have Miami winning. Miami should have beat Florida. Miami did everything they needed to do in week zero to beat Florida except for beating Florida. So Manny Diaz gets his first win over North Carolina and Mac Brown. Close game in Chapel Hill. All right. Uh, Texas Tech over UTEP. A close game. Uh, Washington over Cal. Close game for a half. And then Washington State pulls away. Stanford USC. This is going to be a fun game to watch. 10.30 p.m. on ESPN. So most of my listening audience will not listen, will not watch this game. Uh, Most of the live listening audience. The podcast people probably will. You get a lot of West Coast podcast listens. That's great. Appreciate you guys out on the West Side. On the left coast. Uh, Stanford should win this game. They should win this game. I think that they're going to do, they're going to try to keep it close. They're going to try to influence with the run, control the time of possession. They should win this game close. It's uh, it's like the battle for L.A. (coughs) Minnesota, Fresno State. Fresno State played this SC team pretty close last week. It was really a question last week. Was SC going to win? And Minnesota played against a South Dakota State team that they should have beat by much more than seven points. Minnesota has done a better job of showing how they can Come out with the win. So I'm going to pick 
Minnesota for the victory. Do I dare ask you to give me the line on this one? <laughs> Couldn't find the Oregon one. You think that would be one of the highlighted games? Minnesota minus it opened at minus three and a half. Three. Wow. That's it. This Minnesota team was an a dark horse team to come out of the West. The Big Ten. Jesus. And now they're only favored by a field goal against Fresno State? Not that there's anything wrong with Fresno State. All right. Last couple games. Arizona beats Northern Arizona. And Oregon State heads to Hawaii. And takes another L. <laughs> Hawaii is, is, is going to be undefeated in the Pac-12 going into week three. And which, which would be sitting at the, that means they're sitting at the top of the Pac-12 right now. Literally, they, they, they beat Arizona. They're going to beat Oregon State. So right now, Hawaii is at the top of the Pac-12 conference. Then they play Washington. Then they play Central Arkansas. They get Central Arkansas to travel. To Hawaii. That's Central Arkansas just saying they want a vacation. How many... Isn't that... Isn't playing Hawaii kind of... Wouldn't that be kind of like... It's almost like getting a bowl game. Especially for Central... Central Arkansas. They're paying you... To go to Hawaii... And play... I mean, besides this not having a swag bag, it almost seems like it's a bowl game. Seriously. So. But it's, that's the final pick of the week. Yep. So. There's my picks for the week. Mock me, if you will. Uh, just to close out the show, I wanted to, no, let me skip out of them. No, I'm not going to do those. Oh, uh, I'm not going to do the rankings. No, I'm not going to do the rankings. Okay. So, what, what time? Okay. Well, actually, that, that that does it for the show this week. It's great. It's a good show. We need uh, we need to get the engineer to come check out the microphone or wire or whatever going on here with the mic. I don't know. Other than that, it's going to be a great week. I'm really looking forward to it. Football season is always so exciting. I love it. I'm going to go watch the last episode of Hard Knocks. And write some articles and then go to bed. So, I hope you all enjoyed this show and this week. Tune in next week. Either on Blog Talk Radio, Spreaker, SoundCloud. It's supposed to be over on Apple and Apple Podcast. So, like us, follow us, give us reviews. Wherever it's at. At the CHT on sports.com. That's the show. Remember... We have a sister page now. We're on social media at the CHT on CFB for college football. And uh, make sure to tune in on Sundays for uh, for the Boxing Source radio show hosted by James Bell. And that's all I have for you tonight. 
ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go uh I'm going to go drink a bottle of of honey so my throat stops hurting. And I'm going to go stare I'm going to I'm going to play this little weather map here of a hurricane that uh that that, that doesn't seem to want to move. And I'm out. Peace. <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome to the cold hard truth. Um.